that's me. Uh, this was a nice bridge to my presentation actually. They said they are translating only the good content and I have heard two sides. Uh, that translators are not big fans of media wiki syntax and that they need Wikipedia integrators to integrate the translations into Wikipedia. So these are actually the things that I will be talking about. I have devised a way how to separate the work of translators and Wikipedians uh, to fasten the production, the reproduction of feature articles, but in general any articles into other languages. Well, I firstly tell that uh, this is a project of ELISO that's actually a new Wikipedia, Wikimedia user group that has been recognized in April and it stays for Esperanto and Free Knowledge, so it's linked uh, as a website and it tries to unite speakers of Esperanto that contribute to Wikimedia. You might have heard that Esperanto is an artificial language, so there are almost no named speakers, there are some, few hundred or thousand, but uh, we have a well-organized worldwide community of people who are multilingual because you are not born with Esperanto so you at least speak two languages but many people speak more languages and this is a multilingual community of open people who are open to new ideas such as promoting a neutral language or building a free multilingual encyclopedia like Wikipedia. Uh, this is also evidenced by the fact that the Esperanto Wikipedia has been out since 2001. It was the 11th Wikipedia in existence. It has 180,000 articles and 380 active editors. But we want to talk about Wikipedia. Uh, the best content that Wikipedia has to offer is allegedly featured articles. Featured articles are articles that are long, long that have been reviewed for neutrality, for accuracy, for style, and these have taken a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of people have cooperated on that. Often they compare this work to writing a thesis, maybe even more, it's a lot of work before you get a featured article. And the problem, as we are here, we know that it's languages, it's the problem, but it's a challenge as well that this content is available only to speakers of this particular language. And it would be great to be able to translate it into other languages, because somebody has already uh, made the effort to write the content, we could start and take it and translate it. Well, there is a list of featured articles needing translation on the English Wikipedia. I checked it yesterday, there were 928 pages in this category. And there is another category, more general one, called articles needing translation from foreign language to Wikipedias. And there's a category full with more than 10,000 of articles, mostly French and German, but also many other languages. And these are pages that somebody has marked as uh, worthy of getting the translation into, in this case, English. But there are similar categories and other Wikipedias. But I have seen this is a huge backlog and there are not many people who take care of this, probably also because it takes a lot of effort to translate a featured article. It's a long text and it's difficult to do it on your own, and there is no way, no place where to coordinate the work. If you try to do that spontaneously, you may start translating a few paragraphs and then somebody else comes and adds their own contribution, which is, well, good according to the Wikipedia standards, but they did not understand your goal, which was to translate the article in full, and then maybe keep, let, give it to the community to improve. When I was submitting this uh, proposal for presentation, somebody wrote in the discussion at the end of the page that there needs to be a formal process for translating featured articles. So it is something that might help if you have a procedure, you can follow, you can gather a bunch of people and you can translate the article uh, if you know how to do that. If you can divide the tasks, so if you can divide the work to Wikipedians who know well how to work with media wiki syntax, you can get the translators uh, to work with you more easier because uh, you can 
uh, remove as much of Wikimedia syntax as possible if you use some tools, some standard way how to strip the code and then put it back, obviously. And you can also involve topic experts, people who know about the topic and who can add their knowledge because when you write about a topic in one language and in another, they, they are different perspectives. Uh, you want to write about a topic with relevance to your country, to your language, what has been done in the country, what has been done in that culture. So the translation should not be verbatim translations. It should be reviewed by someone who knows the subject and comes from that language background. And this is a good place, uh, this is a good uh, opportunity to invite more people to contribute to Wikipedia because they are not scared by the syntax, the technical work, if you split the tasks. So if you have a procedure and a technical tool, and that is something that I have worked on, to provide such a procedure and a tool for collaboration, you can split the work, uh, you can have people work on it together, and you can monitor the progress, and you can see how it goes, and you can work into more target languages at the same time because you have to do those two things which are common in uh, translation of software as well. Internationalization, that means to prepare the content for future translation, and then localization, which means to actually translate, convert, localize it into one particular language. And if you do the first step, then you can repeat the second step as many times as you want. So that's internationalization and localization. If you want to uh, internationalize a featured article, you choose one in a search language, Wikipedia. It might be an English featured article, it might be another language. I will be soon presenting a, a use case here. And uh, you take it, you, maybe you check it if everything is okay, but it has probably been done during the approval process. It is a featured article. And you need a Wikipedia to uh, take the text out that should be translated and uh, split, divide the text and the code. And we use an online translation environment, which is something like a translation memory. It can be anything that serves the purpose, but I have one which actually I've been using for translating websites. I've been uh, cooperating with an NGO that creates online language courses. It's also linked to the Esperanto movement, and they have a tool which enables you to translate content into many languages in quite an easy way, I will show some screenshots. And I have used this, so you have to, uh, you have to load the chunks, the text chunks into software. And then you have something that you, could, you can give to translators. So translators get only sentences, individual sentences, with a minimum of wiki code. And there's then the, ch the chance is smaller that they break something up if, if they touch the wiki code and change something in there. Then you have Wikipedians working at the same time, so you already save time here, because as we have heard in this previous presentation, it was very nicely presented that there are challenges like templates, which templates are different and you have to basically change them manually. So you have to translate the template code, and there's a work that Wikipedians can do. It should be someone who is familiar with the target language Wikipedia, and if possible also the search language Wikipedia. But these people don't have to translate, they only do the technical things. So you don't have uh, to have a Wikipedia as one multilingual, you don't have to have translators who have a technical background. And you can invite the experts on the topic to contribute because uh, you already during the production of the, of the model article, of, during the internationalization, you can, uh, you can say that some parts of the article can include local information, like there is a chapter about history of the subject in your country. And then you invite somebody who is familiar with that history from this country and they can add up a few paragraphs about the topic in relation to that country. So here's a use case. Uh, I have taken an article that a few people have developed in Czech Wikipedia about Esperanto, about the language itself. So it's an article in Czech language and it's a featured article. It was the 28th featured article on Czech Wikipedia. It's some 25 pages long, so here is just a really miniature screenshot of the article, and here is a sample of the wiki text. And it already shows how you process the text during the first step, internationalization. So you uh, split it into sentences, I have shown them in different colors, 
and I take away the references and the references go to the end of the article so that they don't mess up with the rest of the text and uh, then I replace the sentences by placeholders. I give them short code names and eventually there is an article skeleton which just says you place this sentence here, this sentence here and in between there are some portions of Wikicode and the thing on the bottom that's something that the Wikipedians work with the thing on the top that's something that the translators will work with using a translation environment so uh, as the person who is doing the internationalization I load the text chunks into the translation space so this is uh, the value of the chunk for for each placeholder, each, each ID and uh, now with Wikidata I can uh, do a lot of work on translating the names of the articles automatically because I can check if the article exists in the other language and automatically translate the name. You can see that now it has changed down, now you have all the article names in English and the translators go and log in into this translation environment. I have uh, put up here uh, screenshots of uh, three different uh, cases. So this is the software uh, where the programmer has loaded the text on the left. So there is some wiki syntax, but I could simplify it a little bit more, I guess. It's basically just the links, and uh, even the names of the articles are not in the text because they are determined automatically, and you only translate sentence by sentence. This is an advantage that you can stop when you want, you can resume the translation later, you can have more people working together if they say that I make the first part, you make the second part, and you can see the progress, uh, the green chunks, text chunks have already been translated, you can see translation history or comment, uh, you know who has done the translation because you can log in into the system, the red chunk has not yet been translated, I'm just translating it at this moment on the screenshot and uh, the yellow one that's for the case uh, it's probably not happened very often here but it happens with websites that you update something later, something that has already been translated so it needs to be updated to be checked what has changed and you need to update the translation and you can see the progress in percent and once you have 100% uh, you can then uh, you can then go on uh, this is the work now. Let's have a look what uh, the Wikipedians have to do during the localization phase. Uh, Wikipedians uh, have to go through the code, uh, which has uh, just been left in the skeleton. So they do not take care of the words of the, of the sentences, but they have to have a look at the templates or at uh, the references and like the stuff you find the, 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 the wiki code, but not 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 the text content. So this is an example how you have to translate a template from, from Czech to English and I, we have just heard that it's not always easy but they only take care of this. Sometimes you cannot translate everything, there are no the, the same templates, you may have to add something and this is something that only Wikipedians can do, they can make sure that everything will render in a similar way in a target to Wikipedia as it was in the source. And now this is the third part, this is the local local expert, as I have called them. This is an example of pictures, so when you write about the history of Esperanto, you want to give a picture maybe of a pioneer of a person who has helped to spread the language in that particular country. So here is an example in the Czech article, we use a picture of somebody who wrote the first textbook of Esperanto, but in the model article I have replaced it with some John Doe, who is some anonymous person, and it says that there should be a picture of someone who is well now in that community and who has had an important role in the history of Esperanto there. So in the English article I would place there a picture of William Thomas Ted who died at the Titanic and he was a supporter of Esperanto. So this is a way uh, how the local people can help to make the article customized to, to make it closer to the target audience and this is also a way how to uh, get rid of some English point of view because the English Wikipedia has these two characters that it's an English Wikipedia but it's also an international Wikipedia and you don't really know what to write about if only English language, British, British or American issues or an international perspective so 
this uh, is a place for the local people to to uh, remove some of these point of views actually. And in the end, we put all this work together. I run a script. You could have seen that it was a PHP code, so it actually combines the chunks from the database uh, with uh, with uh, the skeleton of the article, and eventually it produces a wiki code, which you just paste into Wikipedia, and you can check if everything looks okay, and then you have a new article. So that on the top right, that's the original Czech article. You can see that the template is a little different than in the English article, which is on the on the bottom left. But it has the same information in it. It's been translated. The links work, and sometimes I have moved some links within the sentence. That's not a problem at all. You don't have to use all the links. Something I could not fit some information into the template. I didn't want to change the template. That's why I simply. Uh, Remove the information from there. It is somewhere in the article anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. And uh, you have a new article which has been translated. But I will resume. I will review some of the advantages, and then we will have some suggestions for discussion. So this is a way how you can improve small Wikipedia's uh, by providing high quality content that has been created somewhere else and which could not have been created by people in that small Wikipedia simply because they are too few and they don't have the knowledge. You can improve neglected articles dramatically. So this is a case of Esperanto actually as well because it's a language and we know that people who have English as mother tongue they don't learn foreign languages so often. So the, even the English article on Esperanto is actually not that good. We have a better one in Czech language. So I would su suggest that we translate the Czech article and then we need to see, see what to do. Whether to replace the original article or to merge it somehow, that's for a discussion already. But we can help to, uh, to make these neglected articles better. Uh, recycling of previous work, safe resources. So I think, although there are people who will not agree, that translating content, if the article is good, if it's a featured article, uh, it saves work. And should be done in, if you see that the, the community does not have the, the power uh, to, to, to write an article themselves. Uh, also in translation, oh, there is some mistake in the order, uh, the translation uh, to other languages is then cheaper. Once you create a model, you, you take the work to, to remove the text and load it into the translation environment, you can add extra languages very easily. You just find the translator to translate another language and uh, you find a Wikipedia to, to adapt the wiki code and you have another translation. So you don't have to do that first work over again. And many people can translate at the same time and this means that you can have more translators and you can stop the work and resume afterwards because you are not working with Wikipedia, you upload the text only at the end to Wikipedia. Also cooperation across languages becomes easier because you might have seen in those in those screenshots that there are those uh, small language uh, language icons or language identifiers, and if you click on that, you see the translation in the other language. Those translations that have already been input into the system. This is something I often use as a Czech speaker because Slovak language is very similar, and it's a common practice that I divide translation with my Slovak colleague, and then we just compare with each other, or we even can use Google Translate because it's a good translation for the Czech Slovak, and then we review it, obviously. So it saves work if you have access to the content in other languages, because it helps you to find creative ways how to translate if those are similar languages. And you reach a wider audience, so you can cooperate more easily with translators, with specialists who are not familiar with Wikipedia and you may get more people to produce content for us, that's what we all want. So there are some questions for discussion. I would like to know if something has already been done in a similar way. As I know from the discussion, there somebody thinks that there should be a process for the formal process. I've, I've not found anything like that, that it would have been done in a co coordinated way. So that's why I have come up with my proposal. Uh, it's, uh, also, I don't know how the community will react. We have already heard that some people would reject translated articles. And there is this problem when you are translating something that already exists, but there is a staff article, whether you are allowed to replace it or whether you need to 
merge the two articles, it will probably differ from Wikipedia to Wikipedia from different languages. So we will probably need to discuss that at least at the talk page with the community before proceeding. It's also a question how to keep the created articles consistent with the model or whether this is at all possible. Maybe we, it's just a one-time activity. You translate the feature article, you publish it, and then it has its own life in every language. And when you change something in the model, you, you, you update some information. It would be best if you could just produce the article again and upload it again. But it has probably changed in the meantime in the target Wikipedia, so it's not that easy anymore. Maybe some topics that don't change would be better candidate. And that's a link to the last question, which would be the best articles to start? I didn't know that there was already a group working on medicine articles, so maybe those would be a good idea, for instance. Uh, but we should also think, because there's a lot of articles, which topics are the most interesting and also the most useful and the most easy to work with in this way. So this is the presentation, and now maybe we have a couple of minutes for questions. Thank you. Sentences, and we can also change the order of the sentences in the model 
and that's true that we could add a bit to the languages, thank you. Uh, but uh, we can also, and that's what I have done in, the, in my attempts, that I sometimes take some information that has been added to an article in some language and I enter it through the model so then I can produce it again. But that would probably be doable only with a couple of languages. So it also depends uh, what and your goal is actually. I'll be the model for the idea for other languages. I may be better to um, not too often do things with the first, with the one you translate into. Than develop it by itself. Yes, and if our goal is to improve Wikipedia, they don't have a lot of editors that probably want to change so much the article, so we just yeah. put it for a while. Yeah, that's the solution. Situation. There was a question there, and then there. This. Oh, okay, so that you first. Um, I had the same concern as the first one that um, the quality has to be ensured, so the text is coherent, but the model actually works very, very well on another uh, project. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, other people know it, uh, there's a website called wiki.com with a single V. And that's a, uh, um, an online streaming website for films and um, um, TV series. It's a legal streaming, so they buy the series uh, uh, from uh, distributors. And uh, they do um, translation, it's a, a community translation, much like Wikipedia. And they use the exact same model, so sentence by sentence translation and peer review of um, um, the translations. And there is always a person called, or multiple people called QCs, or quality checkers. And they ensure that the whole text is coherent and conforms to uh, the video. So that in the end, there has to be someone who reviews the whole text and makes sure that it, you know, it makes sense as a whole. Because yeah, a lot of people. If a lot of people are translating, everyone has a different style of uh, writing, and sometimes you can feel when more than one people are translating the text. Thank you for the suggestion. I would definitely check it out. So it was wiki.com with wiki. Wiki.com with a single V. Okay, yes. thank you. And also the last question probably there. Okay. Uh, I just want to mention production. Translation of the week. Yeah. yeah. I know that there are some projects like this. Uh, we can see if they are interested as well. But a lot of these projects are abandoned, but I can see also from the featured articles. So that's good to know where to look for people to start something or to join their initiative, like, like wiki.com. Okay, thank you, people, and maybe we see each other online then afterwards. Thank you.